It is the beginning and it is night. The night holds possibility of all things, but is itself nothing. All that shall be is contained in the night. The night is creation itself, generation, possibility, all completeness and incompleteness. All that has lived, will live, all potential for life and for death. From it, everything will come. From its own generativity will come light, the earth, the stars, the sky. From its timelessness will come time, from its effortlessness, effort. From its warmth will come coldness, from its agelessness, age. It is beyond the elements, yet from it the elements will come. It exists without aging, and yet from it age will come. It exists without personality, and yet from it persons will come. It is the night beyond the night. The night before light rose up like a warrior to give shape and form to the pattern of day following the night, and night following the day. Before man and before woman, there was nothingness. Na te kune te pupuke, na te pupuke te hihiri, na te hihiri te mahala, na te mahala te hinengaro, na te hinengaro te manako. Kahua te wānanga, ka noho i a riko riko, ka puta ki waho ko te pō, te pō nui te pō roa, te pō i tūturi, te pō i pepeke, te pō uri uri, te pō tangotang, te pō wawā, te pō te kitea, te pō te waia, te pō i o ti atu ki te mate. Nā te kore i a e, te kore i wiwia, te kore te rauea, ko tupu ko hau ora, ka noho i te atea, ka puta ki waho te rangi e tūne, ka noho i Hawaii ki, ka puta ki waho ko tāpora po. Ko tau ware ni kau ko kuku paru, ka wawa te a ka whiwhi te rangi ora. Ko ru, no ru, ko au hoko, no au hoko ko rua tupu, ko rua tawito, na rua tawito, rua kaipo, na rua kaipo, ko ngai. Ngai nui, ngai roa, ngai pea, ngai tuturi, ngai pepeke, ko tatiti, ko rua tapu ko koe, ko rauru ko tamarake i ora.
Light has been born from Cory. The endless, empty, formless ages of the primal night. Light has risen sentinel in the sky to stand supreme, clothing the warrior father. Beneath his feet, herself transformed from the original night, lies quiescent the body of the earth the mother of all things. De pu, de more, de will, de yaka, de rea, de waonui, de kune, de te, de kore, de po orangi. Papa. There is forming there now that which shall make mankind possible. Depo de kitea. Depo tamotong. Depo de fafa. Depo namunamu kitaea. Depo tahuri mai kitae. These are the differentiated stages of night. Through each man must pass. He is born, turning, twisting, forced through the narrow passage, until with his first cry he faces the unbearable light. But the time is not yet for him to come. All that we now see is the form emerging from the void, movement from the absolute stillness. She lies there now, still totally covered by the enveloping sky above, the Earth Mother and the Sky Father. Forced upwards from the passive body of the Mother Earth below, straining against the mighty weight of the Sky Father above, life! Moving into the being of both to begin all that is. It is life which carries the seeds of love between these two, crushed as they are, seeming inseparable, almost one. Pressed between the darkness behind and the light ahead.
Good evening. My name is Tane. There is a rather muddled business that I want you to know about, and I thought that probably I should be quite matter-of-fact about it all. The simple fact of the matter is that things can't go on the way they're going, and between my brothers and, and myself, we've hit upon a plan which we think should make things more comfortable for us all. Now, you, ladies and gentlemen, know very well that this present situation is quite intolerable. I know how you've been feeling, all rather weak, and somewhat put upon. Like you, I've been stumbling around here in the dark, pressed down by this awful weight. But I want to tell you that tonight we need tolerate this no further. We know there's light outside there, and we'd all be a lot better off if we could get it more continuously and in greater quantity. I've been talking this over with my brothers, and each of them will have something to say to you tonight. Now, since I want you to follow my lead, I suppose it's only right that I should tell you something about myself. After all, if you're going to follow me, you need to have some reasonable explanation of why you should trust me. I have, as some of you may know, been very busy for some time now. Indeed, I haven't had a moment to myself. I invented one or two things of which I'm rather proud. Health, for example. Now, there's something. We wouldn't get very far without that now, would we? And I've potted around uh, a bit, making one or two things which I'm sure you'll find rather useful. Trees, for example. Now, I'm really rather proud of them, and the grass, and the flowers. I'm sure you will all appreciate how vital these things are to the national economy. Of course, I haven't had things all my own way. I've had a bit of trouble with one or other of my brothers from time to time. Ruamoko is a bit of a nuisance with his volcanoes, particularly since he's so young. It's really time that Mother weaned him. And then Tafiti Matea sometimes runs amuck with his winds and his storms and makes a mess of things. They don't realize that I have to keep things in order, moving along smoothly, the, the seasons and so on. Without me to sustain them, none of them would get very far. But you know how ungrateful brothers can be. Tangaroa, 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 unravel, unravel the tangle, unravel, untwist. Though Rangi is distant, he is to be reached. Some darkness above, some light far below, free to give for the bright day.
I want you all to listen to me and listen very closely. I don't imagine that you want to, but you don't have any alternative. We are about to do something which is both serious and difficult, and this will be accomplished best if all of you act truly in accordance with military discipline. Actually, I don't need to order you to listen to me, because I am inside all of you all the time, and so none of you can escape me, for I am war. I am Tu Matawenga, and every male at birth is dedicated to me. I am war and destruction, and I sometimes appear in disguises so that you all accept me. Comical, isn't it? That little good luck charm that you give to tourists, the tiki, I made it, you know, and I made it in my own shape. You think you're spreading goodwill, do you? Not really. It's me. Bloodshed, strife, quarrels, they are my meat and drink. I have fought with all the rest and beaten them. Actually, I am invincible, and you better acknowledge it. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself short of breath? How do you react when there is snow, frost, 
ice, rain, hail, mist. Have you ever had to stand against a gale force wind? If you've experienced any of these things, then you are well aware that I am a very powerful person. Tafiri Matea, they call me. And amongst all of us, each must bend to me. Tangaroa is a rather slippery character. Pretends that he wants to be placid and peaceful and smooth as glass. Well, it's only necessary for me to run the tips of my fingers over the surface of his body and see what happens to him in a minute. He gets very ruffled indeed. And Tane, plodding old Tane, working down there manufacturing his trees and his bushes. Several times recently, just for kicks, I've come flying in and snapped off a branch or two. Fun, really. And as for Rongo Matane, that hypocrite, pretending that he's all for peace and really he's all for war. One swift passage of my hand and everything he does is flattened. Of all my brothers, the only one who commands any respect of mine is Tu Matawenga. True, I can at times get amongst his troops and cause some dismay, but he is a man of spirit and fire and destruction, and so I admire him. But that doesn't stop me fighting with him just the same. These fellows should remember that it is I that causes the winds to blow between the heaven and the earth, that I am the descendant of that part of that which blew between Rangi and Papa before any of us were there. They should remember the exposed places where I can scream and shriek around them at will. They should remember my power and my destruction. And so should you, peaceably sitting there. Had I the wish, I could disturb you greatly tonight. So remember me. Remember my power. Fear me. Follow me and the rest in what we are about to do.
stood in that clawing world, long debated, for it is not easy that they should agree. Three things must now be done. The world must be drawn apart, cleft in twain, split for all time into the opposition of sky and earth. It is done. They are apart. They cannot now return. They stand, Tane and the rest, free men, but frozen now by the enormity of their loneliness and washed by the freezing cold of space. They realize now why their parents were so locked, each in the arms of the other, for the world outside of love is cold and the winds blow. They all did it. Tane with his cunning and his knowledge. Two with his warriors split it. Tangaroa with the might and the wealth of the ocean. Tafiri Matea with the strength in his breath. And Rongo Martane with his passionate defense of fertility and the right of everything to grow. Only the weakest and smallest of all still clings there, nursing at his mother's bosom, and he no man can help. It is night. Fear the night, for though it is not evil, it is full of awe. 
It contains all this struggle, all this separation. It is a reminder of a perfect unity now forever broken. From it man emerged and his character was shaped. These early happenings have set the style for every action. Every man to be a Maori must live boldly, dangerously, must struggle and fight, stand sharply against the elements and fates. Yet every man must die and return to the night, must go lamenting and lamented into the ancestress who guards the place of death, born on the canoe of Hine Nui Te Pole.